Hey guys, quick introduction before the actual introduction that was taken five days ago. This video became a little bit more than what I expected it to be. That's why it's so lengthy. But uh, the first part is me showing preliminary work, what I do before an auction. Uh, then it will show my uh, winnings of the auction. And then the next is kind of encapsulating a lot of highlight reels that I see out there in social media. And uh, uh, resellers and selling a dream, basically. And uh, I want to address certain uh, aspects of that for, for, for my audience out there. Um, there's a lot of glitz and glam, but sometimes reality is a little bit different than what's being showcased from people. And so it's a little red meat, but uh, it's measured. <laughs> Maybe you guys will enjoy it. Guys, let's get on to the regular introduction of the video. Hey guys, Phil Montelioni, the book peddler, coming to you with another YouTube video. And I'm about to show you some of the preliminary work I do before an auction. I have an auction tomorrow. It's all anthropological, archaeological works on North American Indians. Uh, it's a very niche market, um, but a very profitable one. It can be, at least. Um, I do well with identification guides, all sorts of stuff. I mean, in the, the niche of the better for me, and it's midnight, I'm working late. I'm in my Dr. Seuss jammies. You ain't going to see them. <laughs> so, but, uh, uh, you know, this is, uh, it's taken me about two hours and I have a bunch of tabs pulled up on the computer. I'm going to show you kind of what I do um, before an auction. And uh, I'll show you my list right here. So some of these are uh, lots, like there'll be a few titles here. These are individual books. And I write down the list price. This is what people are hoping to get for the books. Some of them I find comps, about a third of them I didn't, but you can use sites like Live Auctioneers, WorthPoint, all sorts of them. Now, what I would say on some of the books, like, say, the ones over here that I have, some of these I make sure, okay, that's for a first edition limited set. Is that what it is? Um, this one's supposed to have maps in it. Make sure the maps are in there. Look for signatures. All these things obviously affect the price. And you look at this and you see I see a listing for $50. Now, what am I willing to spend for that book? Well, a book that's listed for $50, that's, that's what you hope to get out of it. But um, uh, I might have to take $35. I might have to take $30 for that book. Um, what's the desirability level? Can you gauge it? I mean, I don't want to really spend more than $10 for that book. I might actually pass up a lot of these individual books if I can't get them for cheap. There's a 15% buyer's premium. So you just factor these things in. Um, now, when it comes to, like, the large allotments, uh, it's a little bit different. Um, you know, not to get too neurotical about it, but I've also seen people move good books from a lot into a lesser lot. There might even be better books in some of these lots than the individual ones listed here. You know, auctioneers usually, their specialty is not books. It's not necessarily a book auction. This person just had a lot of books in their collection as as well as the artifacts being sold. So, um, you know, that, that that that's the thing. If you, if you know more than the next guy, now a lot of people will be there trying to look up stuff on their phone and they might overvalue some books. They may undervalue some books. So it's always good to try to do your homework ahead of time. Now, one particular lot, I'll show you my computer. Oh. So here's like a book that was in a lot. Now, um, I could not tell. Take you down here, actually, to the lot listing. I could not tell what the title was. It was the one at the end right here. Um, so I looked up the author. And I found some books that he had written. And... This is absolutely what it is. Prehistoric implements. This person, this bookstore has, excuse me, listed for $500. And uh, so I couldn't tell what was on the spine, but that's exactly what's on the spine. It says elements right there. And uh, I see main right here. So sometimes you need to do a little investigative work. And I'm looking at the condition from a distance and trying to gauge what I'll actually spend for that lot. Um, he seems to be a reputable author and in, in the field, and I'm sure there'll be other books of his there as well that is that is not listed. But that's what I do. I have all these tabs up. I'll do general Google searches and try to find um, the, the right, you know, the right, the right listing and, and, and try to gauge it. I think the key to the auctions is you, you just can't really get emotional 
about them. I mean, you can take it or leave it. If you spend all day there and you don't leave with nothing, then you still got your money in your pocket. I also don't get too crazy about, like, if I overspent on one book. Uh, you make a little mistake. It's not the end of the world. I, I always account for the whole entire auction itself. Not on just one title that, that maybe accidentally I spend a little too much. I mean, if that's the case, so be it. You know, it, it's it's not a big deal. So now with the big lots, it's usually kind of like a rule of thumb. Try to buy them so that there's one book in there or two books in there that pay for the entire lot. And then the rest is all gravy. You can accept best offers. You can be a lot more flexible and the idea is to move materials. So these prices I have down, these are just the listing prices. If there's any key elements that may make your book better than a listed one that you're going for, maybe you can add $20 to that, but you still might have to take 50. So, if it's a if you list it for 70. So, you know, you don't get emotional, you stay relaxed. Use your guideline list and trust in it, and uh, don't get know your cutoff points. Basically, you can kind of read people though in certain ways uh, at a live auction if they're being hesitant on a bid. I like to bid pretty confidently, and um, if you if you catch hesitancy, you got them. Keep, quickly bid for the next, and they're gonna have what four seconds to decide whether or not they really want it, they're going to give it up. At least that's what seems to happen a lot of times. I really like the live auctions a lot. They're a lot of fun. There's really great people there. But I always just keep in mind, I don't know everybody there, and people can do kind of screwball behavior. If I didn't mention before, they might move a good book out of a allotment and put it in a lesser lot. So sometimes I'll, I'll double check stuff a little bit to make sure I'm I'm getting what I'm paying for. And try to keep my eyes, keep, try to keep the books in my viewpoint. And also see what other people look like they're interested in. And what the competition is looking like. Are they dealers? Are they collectors? Um, and so anyways, that's just some of my thoughts. That's some of the preliminary work that I do. Is, uh, is research and try to recognize and pick out authors that are desirable, content desirable. And make sure I get it at the right price point. So... All right, I'm going to take you to the auction. Let's see what I can come out with. The important thing is my preliminary breakfast. So it's a, if you couldn't tell, it's a lot of eggs. Maybe those are fresh from mama's chicken coop. So I eat eggs, bacon, cantina coffee, marb reds. If I don't have a heart attack before I get there, I'm coming to slay lots, baby. <laughs> I come up pulling up with my theme music. Bad to the bone, mean mugging everybody. They're chicken necking. They go, oh my God, it's the peddler. You might as well turn around and go back home because I'm coming to win. <laughs> so anyhow. All right, so I'm back, guys, from the auction. It was a great success. I'm going to rifle through these books and show you what I got. Always my biggest fear at the auction. It's the retirees and little old ladies that, that are there. Uh, any of those type of people, the collectors, they will pay up. There were some books that I wanted to get that... Uh, you know, that went for above retail in some cases or at retail, in in my humble opinion. They went for more than a couple of the books I have priced in here that were the exact same books. But the thing was, is some of those guys there, I mean, they must have dropped 15, 20 grand a piece on, you know, artifacts and stuff. And um, so if they say collected like fluted points or something like that and, there was the authoritative author in that field. It didn't matter what it cost. They were going to buy his books. And, you know, that's how it goes. But luckily, they kept away from a ton of books that I wanted. And I got a bunch of box lots. I did pay individually for books. But it was a wonderful auction. I sat there for like four hours waiting for my stuff to come up. But it, it, it was worth the wait. So now I'll be up late pricing them all. And the night has not ended for me. But um, let me show you some of the stuff I got. I'm not going to put it on the microscope. I'm not going to flip through it. This is I'm just going to show you straight up. So there we go. There's one. Archaeology of Eastern United States. These I do great with. Um, identification value guides. So these were in an allotment. Some of these. Just brand new. Beautiful. Books, Ohio Dovetails, 
The secrets of this one signed and numbered. Gramley. This guy was actually at the auction. Beautiful, clean, sharp books. Could you ask for any better? This one on uh, the Upper Susquehanna Valley I like because that's local by Funk. I'll actually just open this quick. So I paid up a little bit on this book. This was really the only one that I spent the most on, and it's not the most valuable of the batch, but great for uh, local interest. Let's see what's in this box. Uh, Archaeological History of New York. Two volumes in one. Bound. Again. Good local. Very niche. Susquehanna Indians. It's good stuff. Here's a good title right here. Antiquities of the New England Indians by Willoughby. Let's take you on in here. Wonderful book. So I probably purchased about 60% of the lots, if I had to guess. And uh, you guys remember the book I showed you on the computer? Well, there she is right there. I'll take you on the inside of this one. So I actually bought, look at that. What a great book. A prehistoric Implements, a reference book by Warren Moorhead, 621 figures, showing 3,000 specimens. What a wonderful book. And there's old map in it. So that, that worked out. I was expecting to really pay quite a bit for those books. And luckily it didn't happen. A lot of these were in a lot. Beautiful, fresh, new books. We'll just rifle through. Rifle through some of these. This is uh, Willoughby's books as well. Let me get these out of the way. Here's one, uh, Martha's Vineyard. Separate, signed, Gramley. Here's some other Willoughby books. Archaeology of Maine. There's two copies of that. And then uh, this, this book's a good one. Stone Ornaments of the American Indian. And then I just... Priced out that box down there. Let's see what else. You know, these are like brand new books, though. They're all sharp, clean, couldn't ask for better. Very happy with the way the auction went. This was all in an allotment together. Archaeology of Colorado. Old tools, new eyes. Super easy material to list. I've sold this a couple times. All right, there you go. This is what I have left. I have one, two, three, four, five more boxes to go. And uh, I'm going to get to work here tonight. Actually, you know what? Nope, I am going to work. I'm going to get finishing up with these with these books, getting them priced and getting them ready to go. And check these out. I bought these for my uncle. Just a quick diversion from the book. Here's some tools. That they'd use stone head whoop. So they'll look good in a case. Like I said, if he doesn't want them, I'll take them. These here, these are going to go for literally nothing. I go, boy, the cases are worth more than that. So I bought a lot of, you know, from different areas, Kentucky, Maine, I think New Hampshire, different artifact items. Um, again, I, I had to buy them. Uh, they were just being given away, basically. So a little diversion off the books, but... Uh, whatever ones my uncle wants, he can have them. Whatever ones he doesn't want, I'll put them up in the shop. Okay, we're going to go through some of these quick. Uh, these were in a lot of the box lots. First edition, first printing. Should look up that book, by the way. <clears throat> Give you an idea. Beautiful, clean books. Uh, limited 300 in print, signed. Most of this is saleable. Some more great titles. Keep going through them real quick for you. Here's some more. Just going to keep doing this here. Just showing you the titles. 
and maybe I'll do one more small round and then I'll uh, close out the video. Last round, let's make it a good one. Tons of clean, beautiful books. About 80% or better are being listed. All right, let's shift it. And then uh, I'll just um, say a few words at the end here about the auction. All right, we're getting to it. That'll do it. That'll do it. I'm overflowing. So anyhow, here's some boxes to be listed, packed in. Wonderful. All right, guys, so let's put a cap on the whole uh, uh, shebang here. First off, my breakfast routine, proven successful. Again, you might consider adopting it. Second thing is, uh, in the box lots, there were books in there that turned out to be, in a bunch of cases, more valuable than some of the ones that were up on the uh, on the floor that were singled out. So that was great. So, so I expected that. Uh, to briefly address the box lots, you're having fresh eyes on them just like everybody else in there, okay? If there's not a picture and you can do research on them beforehand or get in there to view them beforehand. So what I would say is I'm pretty quick about this now because I've been doing it for a little while. You evaluate the condition, look for signatures, limited edition, uh, first edition, and you try to figure it out in your head of what you can afford to get into these allotments. Maybe it might be best to pass on some and hold out for the better. You know, how much money you got in your pocket. So that now, so it worked out. I bought every single lot and I bought probably 50% of the individual books uh, put up. Okay, so that was great. Biggest competition, retirees and collectors. Can't beat them. <laughs> I can't afford to pay 50% or 50% of, of the value of a book if I'm reselling. It just ain't going to work. So... You know, again, I don't recommend auctions for most people because there's emotions involved and uh, it takes a little bit of time maybe to get adjusted to them and start figuring them out. That's just my personal opinion. Second thing is this. I want to break down, or third thing, I want to break down some of my time invested in this so that you get a little bit of a clear idea. Then I'll address something at, at the end here that you might want to stick around for. It took me three hours to do the preliminary research on this material it's taken me eight to 10 before in the past, the bigger auctions and, and more higher end material. Okay. So the auction was seven hours, 10 hours now total. Uh, it took me like five hours to process, um, 15 hours. I pay somebody to list them. It'd be probably two days, two and a half days to, to complete. Um, so what is that? Another say 10, 12, 15 hours, whatever that is. I'm over 20 hours. Either way, don't ask me to do math on spot. <laughs> that's what I got my accountant for. But anyhow, that's a lot of time invested that I had money going out, right? So uh, there's a lot of content creators out there, and I'm not knocking anybody. Uh, it's nothing personal with, with any of them. They're doing their thing, uh, you know, perhaps making some type of a, a living doing this. And I don't have the time to follow them all. Uh, even the ones I do follow, um, mostly I'm there for educational purposes, if if anything. But with a lot of these guys who are selling a dream to, to everybody, you know, they're showing the highlight reels. That's fine. I show highlight reels. If this went the other way, you wouldn't get a video. It wouldn't be interesting. interested. But let me tell you something. For every highlight bit reel, especially like back in the day, there was one that would have been opposite as well. So it, things don't always work, worked out. Now I'm a lot more measured. I'm a lot better at what I'm doing. I'm becoming a lot more seasoned in what I'm doing. <laughs> so it's no surprise there. But uh, uh, so I'd say the majority of things I, I do fine with, okay? I would just err on the side of caution if you're starting to sell this, the, to get into reselling books and stuff. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. But a lot of people out there would be like, I'm going to make five grand on, on this allotment. Well, I had to redo a part of the video, so let me continue on about this whole idea of selling a dream. So there'll be a lot of uh, resellers out there saying, you know, I'm going to do five grand on this allotment. Well, that's the gross. Uh, usually there's a lot there's a lot of distortion and details left out. And I know you guys are probably smart enough to have discernment between gross and net. 
this is mostly maybe for the young bucks getting into this kind of uh, business or have interest. Um, that's their gross, though. Usually what's not taken into account is like, say, for each one of my transactions, I'm getting feed over 30% easily on, on my transaction. There's money put out. There's time put out. What are you willing to work for hourly? There's living expenses. Where do they live in, in, in this country? There's places that are very expensive to live, some that are less expensive to live. Their processes cost money. The programs cost money. Um, again, I ain't knocking anybody's hustle out there, but I think a lot of it can be very deceiving for, for the average uh, person. Um, so, you know, to get back on my track of mind here, um, every year it doesn't get any easier either, whether that's at least for like a particular kind of seller where sourcing is predominantly done through thrift stores and stuff. Not everybody has a brick and mortar. I would say most don't. What happens if that well runs dry? I mean, it's bound to happen at some point, it seems. I mean, there is a ton of books out there. There's not a lack of books. But, um, you know, the cost of doing business, I mean, my overhead doesn't get any cheaper any year. They raise my insurance by 15% on this building. Shipping's going up. The fees go up. Nickel and dime, nickel and dime, nickel and dime. I'm, I'm looking at credit card processes, right? Uh, 70 bucks a month, 2% each transaction. You know, if I run a 20% off sale in this, in this building and somebody does that, but I paid someone to list it and they get a percentage of the sale in terms of the credit card fees and everything else, how much better am I doing that in shop sales than an online sale that's taking their cut? So there's all these different factors to take into consideration. Somebody making 150 grand net if they live in an area of Florida, that's like low middle class. You know what I'm saying? I mean, here it's it's upper class. So there's a lot of different aspects to this. And a lot of people trying to sell the dream of reselling. And I got to say, I know a, peop a lot of people who have tried their hand at it. And for one reason or another, couldn't hack it. That's not a knock on them. It's not an easy thing to do. You, you, you see, you've seen these highlight reels without detail okay i'm a lot more seasoned now if i was to start this business today it would be a lot harder than it was to doing it starting it 10 years ago and that was hard <laughs> so there's different templates different forms i always think that in order to keep advancing in this business you have to remain flexible and not necessarily be married to any ideal yet you 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 have to be able to uh, adjust and sometimes ad adopt new principles to further this along. Um, and, and I'm about to do that this year that I'll talk about in future videos. But, um, you know, no nothing is easy. There is no quick dollar in this world. Some people might get lucky on something. Um, but uh, generally speaking, work is work. So uh, I've, I've tried to be very measured into how I talk about this because I'm not a gossipy channel and I'm, I'm not going to call out individuals I've seen do this. I could care less. Like that's up to your discernment. I'm just calling BS on a lot of it, um, you, you know, and, and, and a lot of things being left out and not factored into the equation. What I'm saying is in most cases, keep your day job. And, and, and build this on the side if this is what you want to do. So that's what I'm saying in a nice way. Some people who I'm more closer with and open with have definitely heard it from a different aggressive angle from me. Um, but so I'm trying to be measured in how I talk about it and not get too worked up with it. So use your own discernment as to who you follow and choose to believe. I mean, even if they're showing their numbers, and some of them do, there's a lot left out of the mix as well. You know, a lot of these guys, they play like a, a confidence game, you know, like a politician. They're very confident in how they're speaking about it and stuff. But I mean, to use my example, the $5,000, like they say, you know, that's what they might hope to get for that allotment. But there's a timeline to that, to get to that five grand. And it's not always the case. If you're selling on Amazon, you're probably using a repricer tool 
and racing to the bottom. Maybe that five grand turns into more something like three grand, and that's gross. Now do the 50%. Now you're talking 1500 Now living expenses. You don't find the five grand gross even every day. I mean, so it's just a reality that I think is being left out when it comes to some of these channels. Um, if you want to be a bookseller, follow bookselling channels like mine. I don't have a program to sell you. I have nothing to sell you. I have books to sell. But you get to see what's coming in and what's working for me on a, on a weekly basis at least. And um, I, I do get business and selling experience videos and informational videos. And I don't require any money for that. <clears throat> it's not a bad thing to require money. Maybe I should because it's my time. You know, but I do open up a donation box for those who uh, feel it necessary to donate. And it's much appreciated. But follow other book selling channels. People that are, that are doing it and use your discernment. Follow Max at Paper Gold. Guy's been doing it for 20 years. He knows a thing or two. Uh, KGs, Eric at Midtown Scholar. You know, there's a number of them that you can follow and get an idea of what's going on um, uh, with them. So I think that's really all I have to say about the subject. And for the millionth time, you're just going to have to use your own discernment and, and, and who you choose to believe. For myself, you're seeing an ongoing journey of a bookseller. And you're seeing me prove myself. Um, whether that's, you know, getting my new building, setting up two new whole shops, how I go about this business. And now I'm not going to share everything. I'm not going to share numbers. I don't think it's appropriate. It's nobody's business, to be quite honest with you. That's not what this channel's about. Um, and I also have to be careful about saying certain things and addressing certain things. It's from my own you know, business standpoint, what I feel is appropriate, but you can follow the journey and you see in the fruits of my labor. So, uh, does the tree bear good fruit, right? Anyhow, that's all I got to say. My next two videos or my next video will be a vlog video on what I'm doing between the buildings before the big grand opening June 1st, which you all are able to be a part of. If you would like, you can come out not i'll be doing some giveaways for some of you guys i always uh, will say i appreciate your support uh throughout the, uh, all the years and if you're new welcome you know so and uh here's to more videos to come in the future Ho hope you all enjoyed this one and until next time guys we'll see you later